Introduction Welcome to today's lecture on the topic of pneumonia. Pneumonia is a common respiratory infection that can result in significant morbidity and mortality if not appropriately managed. In this lecture, we will explore various aspects of community-acquired pneumonia CAP, including pathogenesis, immunization, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of specific pathogens. Now, let's delve into the first topic. In the next section, we will discuss the pathogenesis of pneumococcal pneumonia, focusing on how the bacteria infect the lungs and cause inflammation. We will also explore the different types of vaccines available and their effectiveness in preventing pneumococcal pneumonia. Legionella pneumonia, caused by Legionella pneumophila, is found in water environments. Diagnosis requires specific tests, such as culture and antigen detection. Treatment involves antibiotics. Prevention involves water system maintenance and infection control measures. Next topic, in the section on atypical pathogens and community-acquired pneumonia CAP, we will discuss Mycoplasma pneumoniae and Chlamydophila pneumoniae. These pathogens differ in their structure, diagnosis, and treatment compared to typical bacterial pneumonia. Community-acquired methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus CAMRSA, pneumonia has emerged as a significant cause of severe CAP, particularly in previously healthy individuals. CAMRSA pneumonia often presents with a fulminant clinical course, leading to severe respiratory compromise. Diagnosis of CAMRSA pneumonia is confirmed by the isolation of MRSA from respiratory specimens. Empirical antibiotic therapy with agents active against MRSA, such as vancomycin or linezolid, is initiated promptly. Additional measures, including respiratory support and source control, are crucial in managing severe cases of CAMRSA pneumonia. Now, let's proceed to the next topic. Severe CAP, defined by the presence of acute respiratory failure, septic shock, or the need for mechanical ventilation, requires intensive care unit, ICU, admission. Proper assessment and triage of patients are essential to ensure timely and appropriate management. ICU admission criteria for severe CAP include the CURB-65 score, the presence of multilabar infiltrates, hypotension, and respiratory failure. Once admitted to the ICU, a multidisciplinary approach involving respiratory support, hemodynamic stabilization, and targeted antimicrobial therapy is crucial for optimal outcomes. Let's explore the next topic. In the next section, we will discuss the optimal management of CAP in immunocompromised patients. We will explore different treatment approaches and interventions that can help improve outcomes for these individuals. Complicated pneumonia, characterized by the development of empyema or paraneumonic effusion, necessitates additional management strategies. These complications result from the spread of infection to the pleural space, leading to the accumulation of pus or inflammatory fluid. Treating complicated pneumonia involves a combination of appropriate antimicrobial therapy, drainage of the pleural space, and close monitoring of clinical and radiological response. Surgical intervention may be required in cases of persistent or complicated effusions. Let's proceed to the next topic. In CAP patients, respiratory viral infections are common, especially in children. Various diagnostic methods are used to identify viral causes, including viral culture, antigen detection, molecular assays, and serological testing. Newer techniques like multiplex PCR panels offer faster and more accurate results, enabling targeted antiviral treatment, effective infection control, and reducing unnecessary antibiotic use. Understanding antibiotic resistance in CAP will be discussed next. Antibiotic resistance is an evolving threat in the management of CAP. The emergence and spread of multidrug-resistant organisms, such as extended-spectrum beta-lactamus, ESBL-producing bacteria and carbapenem-resistant enterobacteriaceae, has led to a need for careful consideration of empirical antibiotic therapy. Understanding local resistance patterns and adopting antimicrobial stewardship practices are essential steps in ensuring appropriate empirical therapy. Tailoring antibiotic regimens based on individual patient factors, risk stratification, and local guidelines is crucial to optimize outcomes and minimize the emergence of resistance. Let's proceed to the next topic. CAP in the elderly poses unique challenges due to age-related physiological changes, comorbidities, and increased vulnerability to severe infections. Elderly patients often present with atypical clinical features, such as delirium, decline in functional status, or hypothermia, making diagnosis challenging. Management of CAP in the elderly requires careful consideration of patient frailty, comorbidities, and functional status. Early initiation of appropriate antimicrobial therapy, aggressive fluid management, and close monitoring for complications are essential in this vulnerable population. Now, let's explore the next topic. 
Aspiration pneumonia occurs when oral or gastric contents are aspirated into the lower respiratory tract, leading to infection. Risk factors for aspiration include altered mental status, dysphagia, and gastroesophageal reflux. Diagnosing aspiration pneumonia relies on clinical suspicion and radiographic findings, which may include the presence of infiltrates in the dependent lung segments or lober consolidation. Management involves addressing the underlying cause, such as dysphagia management or gastroesophageal reflux control, along with appropriate antibiotic therapy. Now, let's proceed to the final topic of this lecture. Post-infectious sequelae can occur following CAP and may include complications such as pulmonary fibrosis, bronchiectasis, or respiratory function impairment. These sequelae can significantly impact the quality of life and long-term respiratory health of affected individuals. Management strategies for post-infectious sequelae involve a multidisciplinary approach, including pulmonary rehabilitation, aggressive management of comorbidities, and targeted therapies to address specific complications. Early recognition and intervention are crucial to optimizing outcomes and preventing long-term respiratory impairment. Concluding our lecture, let's summarize the key points discussed. To summarize, this video explored community-acquired pneumonia CAP, covering its causes, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. It emphasized the importance of healthcare professionals staying updated on evolving trends and evidence-based guidelines. Thank you for watching and exploring the field of pulmonology.